So today I want to talk about digital control. Now, I don't know if this is the type of video that will actually do all that well. We'll see. I have a catchy title and a catchy thumbnail in mind, but we'll see how it actually does. But chances are a lot of you are thinking, Matt, what does digital control mean and why should I care and continue to watch this video? Well, we're going to talk today about digital ownership and data security. I know. That is some very dry content, Matt. I don't know what you're thinking. Can't we go back to talking about the best Linux distro? Well, we'll do that tomorrow. But what we need to do today is talk a little bit about this stuff because I think it's very, very important for us to at least discuss. And I think that this is the proper time because we've seen things like this where Sony has had problems where people have been locked out of their accounts because, you know, various technical reasons, and because all of the content that they own was behind an account, they couldn't get to that content despite actually, quote-unquote, owning it. We also saw this around the same time, is that Sony decided they were going to pull Discovery shows from their PlayStation users that they, quote-unquote, owned. Now, that had been pulled back a little bit, but you'll notice from this headline, they only agreed to step back from this idea for 30 months. That's just two and a half years or so. And they didn't agree not to do this. They just agreed not to do it now. So we've seen things like this in the last few days. And this spurred me to think, and I think that it has spurred a lot of people to think about digital ownership and the things that we actually own. Because back in the day, if we wanted to buy something, we would own it. So we would, if we wanted to have some music, we'd go buy a CD. Or if you're a little bit older, you would buy an 8-track or vinyl or whatever. If you wanted to have something like that, you'd buy the physical thing and you'd own it. It'd be in your house. You could do what you wanted with it. And that's just the way that it was, right? Nowadays, despite the fact that physical media does still exist it's much more convenient to go to Amazon or go to Apple or go to Netflix or whatever and buy or rent or subscribe to the thing that you want to watch and no longer have that actual ownership. And it's that convenience that people have paid for and are coming to find out that it realizes that you've lost something there, right? You have, when you give the control digital control, remember, at the beginning, if you give the control over that content to someone else and allow them to pull the wool over your eyes into making you think that you own it, but you really don't, you've lost something there that we used to have. Now, I think that all of this Sony stuff has opened a lot of people's eyes to this again, but it's not a new problem, guys. We've known that we don't own this stuff since 2001 when iTunes first came out. When you bought a song from iTunes, it used to have DRM on it, right? You couldn't even get that thing to play in other music players, let alone have it to burn to a disc or something. You couldn't really do that. And now they quickly got rid of the DM or they eventually got rid of the DRM. But still, when you bought that thing, you didn't really truly own it. Apple owned it and they were allowing you through their terms of service to use it. There were multiple examples over the years of Apple no longer having access to media and pulling it off people's hard drives, or at least pulling it off their accounts. Now, if they had downloaded it and ripped it to a CD, they actually still had it. So there was still that option for, for at least a lot of that time period, but they could no longer download it again. So that happened many, many times over the course of the iTunes years. And it happened to other services as well. This wasn't just Apple. It's just a thing that they could do. If they if they lost the right to distribute some certain kind of media, you know, songs or whatever, they'd pull those off people's accounts, even though people technically owned them and should have been able to continue to download them for as long as they wanted to, right? So that's, that's not a new thing, despite the fact that people are finding out that the problem still exists. Obviously, the solution here is to buy physical media as much as possible or do the dreaded p-word we won't talk about that because i'd like to, this to not be demonetized but the idea here is that you need to have a physical copy of the thing that you want if you want to then make it digital you can but it still lies on physical media that you control isn't locked behind account, an account doesn't require the internet to access all that stuff that's the solution now the reason why I've tied this to data security is because it all kind of plays in the same area, digital control. We can't go a day without seeing headlines like this one, or this one, 
or this one, or this one. All of them are about cyber attacks and data leaks that have happened over the course of the last three days. Now, all I did to find these was search Google News for data leak. That's all I did, and that's all that came up. Like, one after another, all of these happened within the last few days, or have been talked about in the last few days. And the reason why I want to talk about this now is because we have become desensitized towards data leaks. It happens so often, and it happens to so many people, and so much data has been leaked. We can't pay attention to that and stay sane. We can't worry about that and still be able to function, right? We can't sit there and think about how our data is at risk all the time to these companies that can't seem to get it in their heads that they have to actually protect the data that they're in charge of. We can't worry about that because if we did, we'd literally go insane and we won't be able to function it just happens too often and we've developed this mechanism where we just kind of don't care about it anymore because it doesn't affect us personally the only times we do care about it is when it does affect us so either your identity has been stolen or your bank account has been you know emptied or whatever then you really care and you wish you would have cared earlier but the vast majority of people who aren't personally intimately affected by these leaks has to feel like they just don't care because it happens so often and the reason why i've tied this back to digital control is because unlike digital media which you have never really truly owned your data is something that you do own it's something that you have control over especially when it comes to the act of giving data now once a company has your data they basically can do whatever they want with it and they don't have to tell you about it. They, there's no real laws out there saying, you know, this is what we do. I mean, the EU does the best job of kind of dictating, you know, that disclosure, but the rest of the world doesn't really have anything like that. And we just kind of have to take their words, even that they are following what minuscule laws are out there. So the control comes in when you have the act of giving a company that data and you have to decide then what data you give them. So all of this comes down to the idea that you have to very much pay attention to what you digitally control. What do you actually control and how can you circumvent the lack of control when you find yourself in that situation? So what do you do with media that you don't really own? Well, you go find yourself some media of equivalent nature that you do physically own. That's the solution. Now, how you get that media is going to be up to you. I recommend going to Amazon and buying it and just completely bypassing the digital requisition of media to begin with. That's what I would recommend. That's the solution. Own the physical thing and nobody can take it away from you. That's the solution. When it comes to your data, of course, you have the control over who has that data. And you can do this in any number of ways. You can live in the woods and not talk to anybody, not connect to the internet. That's the extremist way of doing things. And it sounds more and more appealing every day. But the more rational way to go about doing it is to create silos. Have accounts for specific places on the internet that doesn't have access to any other data but what you give them. So you sign into that account all they're going to have access to is what you determine that they can have. Find yourself as private a browser as you possibly can. Use that. And when you're done, clear your cookies. Make sure you block as many cookies as you possibly can. Don't allow them to sign you in between different sites. So if you have a Google account, don't go to Medium and sign in with your Google account. Don't do that. Okay, that's just going to allow Google to have all the information that is on your Google account. Block as many cookies, again, as you possibly can. Have silos and containers for different pieces of information and then control what information goes into those silos, into those containers as much as possible. But as you guys discovered, if you followed along with my privacy journey over the course of this last year, it's really freaking hard to do this and do it right and even to do it at all. It's really, really freaking hard. And the problem is, is that having a single Google account or a single Apple account or whatever that follows you around is really freaking convenient because you don't have to sign in to things. You don't have to create a new account or 
put a new password into your password manager or remember a new password if you don't use a password manager. First off, use a password manager. <laughs> but, but you don't have to do any of those things because it's really convenient to do that. And the more convenience they offer you, the more data usually they're going to take. That's usually the equation. We, we get convenience, they get data, they can sell that data and use it to do all sorts of stuff marketing and nefarious stuff and all that, all of it and of course the more data that they have the more damaging a data leak can be if they have your social security number and your bank account information and your driver's license number that information should be treated as precious by you because you know it's not going to be treated as precious by them they don't care they want to save as much money as possible and that means skimping on security as much as possible. The vast majority of companies, at least. I'm sure there are some good data security people out there that work for these companies and they're just doing the best that they can. But for the vast majority of companies, they don't care. And that's the reason why you see news article after news article of data leaks happening because these companies didn't invest in security as much as they should have. And they were easy targets. The vast majority of them could have been avoided by simply teaching their employees not to click on links and emails. That's the, Every time you see a ransomware thing, the vast majority of that stuff happened because one of their employees was a dumbass and clicked on something in their emails. First off, don't do that. There, I solved the problem. It's, I mean, at least that problem. You know, don't click on stuff in emails. Don't do it at all. It doesn't matter if you recognize the sender at all because you you maybe you missed, you know, something there. Don't click on anything in an email. Don't do it. This doesn't apply just to companies. If you, if you, you at home, don't if I send you an email with a link and if I did, and even if you know me personally, if you're my brother, don't open the damn thing and click on it on the link because I'm for sure sending malware. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just it, it, a lot of security is just common sense when it comes to that personal security. But also when you call, talk about data security for these companies, a lot of it is common sense as well. And, and they won't even follow that. And that literally costs them nothing to do. All they have to do is send out a memo and say, hey, don't click on links. Don't do that. <laughs> now, obviously, there are more technical and nefariously technical malware and stuff out there but that one thing could save a lot of companies data from being stolen but they don't do it because they don't care anything to save them money right so it all comes back down to you have the control of your data and you can control who has it as much as possible control that data and hoard it to yourself because no one else cares about the data despite the fact that you know they probably should so all this boils down to, I'm moving into the woods. I think, I, like I said, it looks more and more tempting each day is to find a cabin in the woods with no internet connection and just sit there in front of the burning log fire and just ponder fate and my existence and all that stuff. So uh, if you guys don't see me, you'll know where I'll be. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you haven't already, I didn't ask for this at the beginning of the video, but if you would, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. I'm not sure again how well this video is going to do, so a thumbs up would really be appreciated. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to my merch store, which has a whole bunch of awesome merch, including desk mats and hats and hoodies and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff shop.linuxcast.org is where you'll find that so i really appreciate everybody who has done that and will do that in the future thank you so very much thanks everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube because you're all absolutely amazing without you the challenges would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it. you guys are awesome without you again just wouldn't be here i'd actually really would probably be living in the woods without you guys so thank you so very much for that thank you Everybody for watching, I'll see you next time.